it's a, it's a program for women from um, the Silicon Valley that you take online, so anybody in the world can take it. And then at the end of the program, so they will explain you that the whole process and whatever. Uh, I knew already, but I, I I loved the idea of the program so much. I did it, and then they pair you with someone at the end. And they paired me with uh, Julie, which was the founder of a big cosmetic brand that she resold sold for like four million dollars or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and she introduced me to her previous investors. And her previous investors are the ones that uh, competed all around a year later with another 100K. Welcome to the Friends in Beauty podcast, a safe space for ambitious beauty industry creatives to have real talk, get real answers and practical tools to grow their businesses. My name is Aquia Robinson, and I'm a makeup artist, beauty educator and the creator of Friends in Beauty. I created Friends in Beauty to support like-minded creatives just like you on their quest to connect, network, and build genuine relationships within the beauty community. Join me every week as me and my special guests reveal the keys to success and longevity in the beauty industry, and most importantly, have fun while doing it. You ready? Hey, what's up? It's your best friend in beauty, Aquia Robinson. Welcome back to another episode of the Friends in Beauty podcast. I am so happy to have you here with me, and I hope you're listening to this episode in high spirits and in good health. If you are a friend in beauty, I welcome you to join the Friends in Beauty Facebook community. If you're looking for a community of like-minded, ambitious friends in beauty to virtually connect with, network, and share resources, then click the link down below in the show notes to join the community, and I'll be there to welcome you with open arms. Also, follow Friends in Beauty on all social media platforms at Friends in Beauty. What I like to do is something called the Friends in Beauty Friday feature, where every Friday I spotlight a different friend in beauty and their accomplishments. So no matter how big or small you think it is, I want to shout you out. I want to send you some good vibes. So all you have to do is use the hashtag FIB Friday feature and tag Friends in Beauty on something that you have accomplished, and I will share it with the community. Additionally... The Friends of Beauty podcast is available on several platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google, YouTube, subscribe, okay? You name it, we are there. Whatever platform you are listening from right now, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into the Friends of Beauty podcast. I truly appreciate it, and I will appreciate it even further if you took the time to leave a five-star rating, a review, a like, subscribe, a share, something just to let me know what you feel about the Friends of Beauty podcast. I would just absolutely love it. Also, join the Friends of Beauty mailing list tribe. I send out different resources throughout the week to help in your business and just to keep you uplifted and motivated. So if that is something that you're interested in as well, the link for that will be in the show description too. And last but not least, the most important thing is to share the Friends of Beauty podcast with your other Friends of Beauty, your family, your friends, anybody that you think could benefit from the information that is being shared Share, share, share a way to help me grow the Friends and Beauty community now. Today, on this episode of the Friends and Beauty podcast, I welcome Kenja to the Friends and Beauty guest chair. Kenja is the co founder of Anju Cosmetics, an ex L'Oreal marketeer and an absolute beauty junkie. Anju Cosmetics is a European black owned beauty brand that believes it's time we take charge of our own beauty challenge industry standards and create the world we believe we deserve i had such an amazing time chatting with kendra she dropped so many gems that i was not even expecting she went and she shared how she created a facebook group that grew to 40,000 women in such a short amount of time that went on to become her ideal clients for her beauty brand. She gives advice on doing a proper launch and some setbacks to avoid so that you can make sure you launch successfully. She also shares how to get investors to fund your beauty brand launch. And she also shares some upcoming product launches that she has with Anju Cosmetics and so much more. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this interview with Kenja of Anju Cosmetics. Enjoy. Welcome to the Friends of Beauty podcast, Kenja. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. I'm so excited to have you. You are absolutely gorgeous. I'm so excited to get to learn more about you and your brand and everything. So before we jump into the interview, I want to start off with some icebreaker questions just so that the Friends of Beauty community can get to know you a little bit outside of what you do for your brand. (laughs) 
All right. So give us three random facts about you. Oh my God. I'm really, really scared of pregnant women for some reason, but I love babies and I love mothers and everyone. But I'm so scared. Of it. <laughs> um, I've lived in like 10 different countries and, um, you know, I have five sisters, let's say. Wow. Okay. <laughs> scared of pregnant women. You lived in 10 different countries and you had five sisters, no brothers. No brothers. Wow. Okay. So what does self-care look like for you? Oh, wow. I think it's a, it's actually a deep question because you think self-care and you feel, think like a bath and a book and, you know, a face mask. But to me, it's actually being able to put you first. And like, that includes saying no a lot. So mm. I, I know it's cliche, but it's so true. Um, because you're so used to having like your, you know, your elder siblings or your parents or your friends being able to rely on you. And at some point you have to say, okay, where does this not fit with who I want to be and what I want to do? And that's really hard. Right. I, I totally agree. I have to I learned like as I gotten older to learn how to say no and like how to say no without like explaining myself to like no, just no. Just no. Yeah. <laughs> so I have these things called pod decks um, that I got over the holiday time. And one is like a, would you rather deck? They have like random questions. Would you rather? And what the heck? So I'm going to ask you a question from whichever one you want. want. Right. Would, would you rather or what the heck? Would you rather? Would you rather? And these things be so weird sometimes. I be like, okay, who came up with this stuff? <laughs> but <laughs> let me see what it gives us today. Nah, see. Is it weird? Yeah, it's like weird stuff. So this one says, would you rather your fingers always feel sticky or your throat always feel itchy? Uh, <laughs> I'd rather my fingers always feel sticky. Yeah, I think I would rather that too because I've been battling with like sinus stuff for like two weeks and I'm over it. So if, I, if my throat was itchy forever, I would, I would go crazy. <laughs> so the next one I want to ask you totally random is like, what do people always tell you that you're good at? Oh, um, that I'm a go-getter, you know, mm -hmm. there's something to do. I go and do it and there's no, you know, excuses. There's no whatever, it, basically that I'm able to deliver. I like that. That's a good thing to be good at. It's a good thing to be an entrepreneur, you know, when you were, when you have to do everything, then it's a definitely a good thing. yes. And what's your favorite place that you travel to? Or I'll say, what's your favorite place that you have lived since you've lived in 10 different countries? Okay. Um, hands down, Kinshasa in Congo because I was I was born in Belgium um so all I've known my whole life was you know Europe and, and that life and then when I was 15 my parents decided to move back and it was the first time I had seen this many black people at the same time at the same place mm -hmm. and I got kind of like this is different but I've never felt more at home and you know it was a great time I stayed there for two years and it was a great time nice and Congo just had like an independence right like the independence day just passed did y'all just celebrate like an independent day? No. Hmm? How do you know? I saw it, girl, on like <laughs> IG. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, 30th of June. Nice. Yeah, I saw some people posting and everything. And I know a couple of people from Congo. Nice. Yeah, nice. And I, I totally agree with you with like seeing just like all people that look like you. Because when I traveled to Ghana, I definitely felt that way. And I just came back from Senegal. Um, today is actually two weeks since I've been back from Senegal. And when I was there, I was telling people like, it's, it's something very interesting about going somewhere where everybody looks like you. And they're like so unapologetically African with their, their African clothes and just the way they carry themselves. It's so beautiful. So Absolutely much. love it. Alice, by the way, I always wanted to go to Senegal. And one of my employees is there. She left yesterday. I, uh -huh. I, I'm dying. I really want to go. Should have went with her. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> and the last one I want to ask you, if you weren't the, the CEO of Anju um, Cosmetics, what would you see yourself doing? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? 
Mm -hmm. If you weren't the CEO of Anju Cosmetics, what could you see yourself doing? I have no idea. I have no idea. Wow. I've never actually asked myself that question, to be honest, because uh, I've always worked in beauty my whole life. Maybe like a broker, like a finance, financial broker, mm -hmm. or, you know, or maybe I would just probably want to get married and do, you know, stay at home. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? It's not so. bad at all. Shoot. I wish I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. I want to go ahead and jump into who you are. Who is Kenja? Tell me a little bit about like your background and everything. Okay, it's uh, I, I can already tell you that's a long answer I'm about to give you. So as I was saying before, so I was born in Belgium, and then my my parents when they came to Belgium, they always said that they were going to go back. You know, like next year we're going back next year, and then they stayed for thirty years. So when I was 15, we moved to Kinshasa, uh, where I stayed for two years. And then I moved to England so that I could do one year of English. And then I ended up staying for my whole bachelor degree. Um, I went to California to do my, uh, like an exchange program kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I went back home to Belgium to start working as a marketeer uh, for Yves Saint Laurent Beauty at L'Oréal. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I stayed there for like a year and a half and they kept on like uh, expanding my contract again and again and again, which is a little bit illegal. And at some point I said, guys, just like hire me, give me like a, you know, a permanent contract. And they said, no, we can't hire you if you don't have a master's degree. So I went and I did my master's degree in um, Dubai, Shanghai, Boston. And when I came back, I really wanted to go back to L'Oréal because I loved, absolutely loved it. But I got hired at Henkel. I don't know if you know that company. Never heard of that. It's it's quite weird because it's the word leader in glue. They have like Prit and like all of these glue brands, but they also have a cosmetics division and they have Diaderm. Do you know the, the brand Diadermine, which is like a skincare brand for older women? Mm -hmm. No, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's a German company and I worked in the beauty division for like a little under a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I didn't like, I didn't like the company at all. So I left and I um, started my first business, which was a marketplace that facilitated the communication between makeup artists and hairstylists and brides. Ooh, okay. So that was my first business. I closed it after two years and then I started on cosmetics. That is amazing. So that went like really quick. So when you went to England... Like, where were you studying? You were just studying English or were you majoring in something too? Oh, so I did a year of English and I did uh, marketing management. Marketing management. Okay. Then you went to L'Oreal. Was that like an internship? I started as an internship and then I ended up being a product junior product manager for like three months. Wow. So what kind of things were you doing at L'Oreal? Oh my God. If I could tell you the life. First <laughs> of all, the first day that I got there, my boss was like, it's 6 p.m. You can go home. Mm -hmm. but it's, like, it's your first day. So it's the only, only day that I'm going to let you do this. I was like, what is she talking about? And then I realized that people like stay until about 11 p.m. every day. Mm. It's so like you're doing so, so much. But my role was uh, in marketing. And what we did was we used to receive all of the products, communication, and everything from France, which is the head, real like world's headquarters. And then we would kind of translate everything for the Belgian market, if you wish. Gotcha. So it would be everything from marketing to merchandising and putting it in the stores and communicating with the, um, with the salespeople that are on the road, uh, all of that. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Did you enjoy your time there? So much, you can't imagine. Because the rule at L'Oréal was, at, at the time at least, was that you, they don't hire you if you don't have like, um, if you haven't lived in several countries or don't speak like several languages. So it's like a world where you could like bump into like a little blonde girl in the elevator and she speaks like Chinese, like Mandarin, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. never know what people paths are and you meet so many interesting people. You work your ass off like Saturday, every day, but it's good. I'd rather that. Yeah. How many languages do you speak? Only two. <laughs> <laughs> I 
he speaks English and in French. I'm trying to learn some French. I mean, I just downloaded Duolingo because when I was in Senegal, I was just lost in the sauce. Like I was with my brother-in-law, he's from there. So, and my sister speaks a little French because she took French in school, but I took Spanish. I wish I took French, but I'm trying to learn some French now so that next time I go back, I could be a little bit more comfortable with communicating and everything. So, yeah. So after your time at L'Oreal and everything like that, what inspired you to go ahead and create Anju Cosmetics? Uh, Anju Cosmetics was the, the company that I've always wanted to create. So even my first company, I only made it because something happened in my life that led me to it, but it wasn't like my, you know, my baby idea. Yeah. Whereas on cosmetic was something that I thought about since I was like nine, you know, so mm -hmm. definitely something I wanted to do. Um, and here we are. Yeah. <laughs> and where does that name come from? What does Anju mean? It's actually my first name. It's your, okay, that's your first name. Oh, that's so nice. So what was the process for creating the brand? What are some of the steps that you had to go through to like get it up and running? Um, so you have to know that initially we really, the brand was only directed at African consumers. So we wanted to do Africa and not any other place. Mm -hmm. um, we are switching now. I'll, I'll probably explain why, but when it started, I was in Kinshasa and I was visiting my parents. Um, and I was, I'm always one to like be into any beauty conversation. So I went down to the city hall to get like my ID renewed and I met those girls who were just, you know, just there. I started chatting with them about makeup and everything. And then I created like a Facebook closed Facebook group for us to be able to continue speaking without me having to, you know, give my details. Yeah. And I went home, I went to sleep, brushed my teeth, everything. And then the next day I woke up and it was like under a thousand people asking to be part of the group, you know, like requests. And I was like, okay, it's kind of weird. So I switched the the, page, the group to a page so that people could just join. Um, and then by the time that I got back to Belgium, it was like eight or 9,000. So, and it was, it was nothing. It was like, I put like, do you know, makeup by Shayla? Yeah, by Shayla, yeah. She's never going to see this, but I put like her picture as a profile picture, like, like any random picture. So it wasn't like the, it was, there was any special content or anything, but I, once I saw that people were signing up, I was posting like random pictures. And when I got back, I talked to a friend of mine who, um, who always said that she wanted to run a business. And I said, look, I think that something is happening. And what happened just like naturally is that people, when we posted pictures on the group, people started asking, oh, what's that lip gloss? Or what's that lipstick? Or what's that, you know, what's that product? And what we did was we used to go like after work to the stores like Kiko or Mac Cosmetics or whatever, and like buy the products full price, mm -hmm. ran to whatever uh, company we had that did the shipping and then shipped this woman for like $25 worth of shipping charges. It didn't make any financial sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> we lost so much money, but we did that for like a few months. And then we said, you know, we can't keep on doing this. It doesn't make any sense. Um, we got to stop. And I don't remember what happened at that time. I don't remember who said it, but we decided to actually ask the, the woman in the group. And I think at that time it was maybe something like 40 or 50,000 women at that point. Wow. It was a lot. It was a lot. And so we asked them, what do you, you know, what do you expect from this? What is it that you want to see? Um, and I swear to God, almost all of the women that replied said something about skin mm -hmm. they all said the same thing they said my skin is shiny i have hyperpigmentation um uh, i have um you know some people talked about like hair which i think is hormonal has nothing to do but what, it was what people said and so we decided that maybe we wanted to launch our own product and when we did that we didn't have anything so we um ordered like a whole set of samples from different vendors to be able to try out some different things. And when we found, what we found out what we wanted, we uh, started taking pictures that we posted on uh, Instagram, but we didn't have any products or anything. We just typed the samples. Yeah. Um, and then from then people started asking what they can buy. So we opened a, a waiting list, uh, 10,000 women sign up on the waiting list. And from then we were able to go and raise some funds to actually go into production. production. That is amazing. So I want to backtrack a little bit. So what year was this? 
that you started the Facebook group? Maybe like 2017. Okay, 2017. Yeah. All you did was you posted to, to start with, you just had a picture of makeup Shayla as like the, the cover photo of the page that attracted people. What, would like, what was like the demographics of that group? Was it like only African women or was it kind of like global? No, it was purely Congolese. It was Congolese in, women. It was, yeah, and it was very straightforward. It was Congolese, it was women, and it was 18 to 30, 34. Uh-huh. That was the, the big chunk of the group. Um, yeah. So at that time, I'm, I'm imagining that in Congo, that, that area was like untapped with like beauty and having beauty products available because you were taking products from like Mac and everything and just like you know mailing it off to them because they didn't have access to it i think so because i you know i've been in congo so i know how it goes you know there's a lot of cosmetic products out there but it's a lot of counterfeit and I, you've been to africa you know kind of how it is you know you go yeah. to like market whatever uh it's it's never it's really hard to find like quality products that you can trust where it came from and if it's actually the actual product and a lot of women that talked about having facial hair talked about that in particular. You know, maybe it's the products that I put on my skin. I don't believe that it is. I think it's a hormone problem. Yeah. But that's, that was their conclusion. Um, and so, I saw, I, 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 I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. So, most of the women had like the hormonal problem. So, you, oh, yeah. you grew the yeah. group. To over forty thousand people, then you had the wait list of ten thousand people. Then what happened? Then I kind of want to say I don't want to say that we screwed up, but probably because we put those women. You know, when you sign up on a waiting list, you don't want to wait like nine to ten months to be able to you know get any product that you were interested in. You're going to move on and find wherever you know find it wherever. Yeah, that's what happened with us because. When we get the 10,000, I thought, okay, it's time for me to go and raise some funds, uh, which takes a lot of time. <laughs> As entrepreneurs will know, it's a, you know, it's usually like five to seven months to even like raise one round. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I, I raised a portion of the funds, like half of, of what we wanted to raise. And then I went back and we went into production. And that was really, really um, long as well, because the foundation, the way that it's made, is actually like a white base and then you know, your laboratory or your vendor as like color to it. But that's what makes it really um, wrong with the undertone because that, that's what makes you look gray if you're really dark. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be able to work with someone that used a colored mix from the beginning and then work their way up in, in terms of tones, you know? So it took, us, it took us a while, like I can't even remember, but like months to be able to find the right find a vendor to uh, place an order, you know, like the day that we were ready to place an order, I called them and they were like, oh, you know what, we're closed for the summer, like two months. I was like, what? This is insane. Um, then there's so many things that you need to think about, like cosmetics is pretty regulated. So you can't just be like moving products around from country to country, it takes a lot of time. You have to like fit in a couple, you know, a lot of stuff. So it took us a long time from the time that we had those people excited mm -hmm. and the time that we brought the product to market. Like it was, to be honest, now I want to say it's almost like unacceptable, but that was that was our journey. We didn't know any better at the time. Yeah. In hindsight, you could do things differently, but you were just going off of what you knew at the time. So when you finally launched, did you, you launched with foundations first? Yeah, that's that was our only product for a while. <laughs> so we launched a foundation, and then what happened was that we um we found it was really, really hard to ship to women in Africa individually, like impossible. It's so expensive. It doesn't make any sense really. So what we started to do was building our own network of distribution. Mm -hmm. um, we got like all of this, we did like ads on Facebook and Instagram to ask women if they wanted to become vendors for us. And women like have to buy a certain amount of products like a stock, you know, it's like 10 products minimum and then they can be become an angel cosmetics vendor. So we have 150 something in six countries yeah. at the moment. That's amazing. Oh my God, this is so good. So how much money did you like raise in the beginning from like your investors in order to like start the brand? 
So the first half, the one that I just told you about, the first half that I raised was 100K. So it's really like, if you're asking entrepreneurs, it's like nothing. People go and raise like a million dollars on the mm-hmm. first to start with. Um, but it was, it was only half of what we needed. And what happened was, it happens so often that you're talking with some investors and then somebody backs down and because the first person backs down then the other one, you know, it like just falls apart, which is what happened with us. Um, so we had that 100K and we decided, you know what, let's do it. Let's just go and then we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was with an investment firm here in Belgium. And then I uh, attended this program. I don't remember, it's, how's it called? Raise something. It's a, it's a program for women from um, the Silicon Valley that you take online. So anybody in the world can take it. And then at the end of the program, so they will explain you like the whole process and whatever. I knew already, but I, I, I loved the idea of the program so much. I did it and then they pair you with someone at the end. And they paired me with uh, Julie, which was the founder of a big cosmetic brand that she resold for like $4 million or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and she introduced me to her previous investors. Got you. And her previous investors are the ones that uh, completed all round a year later with another 100K. But it's like a huge um, American investment firm that, that that's really good for us. Nice, nice. So do, is it like kind of like doing like a pitch competition where you have to tell people about your brand and things like that for them um, to invest? No. No. Um, no, I did pitch, but it wasn't like a competition. It's just, you know, do you have a good feeling with, uh, with people? Do they trust what you're saying? It wasn't like a prize that I won or whatever. It was just relationship, really. Yeah. So when did you launch? What year did you finally launch? I honestly can't tell you. Like, I can't remember. Because I, I honestly can't remember. All my so years are, like, that. meshed together at this point. Like, I don't even remember what, one year from the next. Exactly. <laughs> And also it took us so, so much time. It's not like we had like a date in mind and then we built, you know, everything up to that date and then said, we launched that day. It was kind of like, we don't have anything ready. We don't have the product. We don't have the money. We don't have the anything, but let's just go. Mm-hmm. And so I can't tell you, I honestly can't tell you how long it's been. Yeah. So like looking back at the way that you started off the brand with like the different challenges that you had. Like, what is something that you would, like, with the knowledge that you have now, what is something that you would have done, like, differently with launching? I definitely wouldn't have taken that much time. For mm-hmm. sure. um, like, we share, the, the American investors that we have uh, also invested in Away, do you know that company? It's like the yeah. luggages, yeah. Yeah. And I saw something, like, the, the, the founder saying that the day that they were supposed to launch, it didn't have the product either, mm-hmm. but they came out with a book. And they sold the book to the people that had already pre-ordered. Gotcha. Like, you know, like it's a nice way to, you know, to get people to still, still be engaged and like not just do nothing, which is what we did. And I really regret that. Um, did that hurt I'm like sure. your, um, like when you finally launched, did that kind of hurt? Like the amount of people that bought, I'm trying to figure out how, how to ask, like the fact that you waited so long, did that affect like your sales in the beginning? Absolutely, because we're expecting so many people to buy, you know what I mean? Because we had that wait list, the people that were excited and asking about the product. Uh, and then the day that we launched, it was kind of like a little bit cricket, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think maybe one thing we did right was that we launched on our, our feed pretty quickly because we immediately went and, you know, recruited all of these women that sell for us because they have to buy from us first. So they became our customer. Right, right. So at that time, what made Anju Cosmetics different from, I guess, the stuff that they had access to? to? Definitely quality. Um, definitely quality, because our products are made in France, and Europe has the strong, strongest and strictest, uh, strictest sorry, regulations when it comes to cosmetics. Mm-hmm. So clean. We're not able to put anything, you know, shady in the products. So quality for sure. Also, maybe... Um, I don't want to say storytelling, but definitely branding when it comes to Africa, because in Africa you go, you go to the market and it's easy distribution. You can like buy any product, but you don't have any 
the, the, that's where it stops. Your only relationship to the brand is just you buying the product. There's no number you can call if there's a problem. There's no email, there's no website, there's no Instagram, there's no representation in any shape or form. So that made us really, really different. Yeah. How did your time at L'Oreal with working in marketing help you or how does it help you now with your brand? Um, I'm not sure that it helps me now, but one thing I'm going to tell you and be very blunt about it is if you go through like a very big company and then you want to go ahead and raise funds in the same industry, it is always a winner. Like you go in, in front of some investors and you go, you know, I'm doing this big company and I used to work at L'Oreal is instant credibility, instant trust. Yeah. Like if you want to do it, if you want to go and raise funds and you have that in your pocket, then it's a good, good card for you. I'm glad that you went through that. <laughs> so do you have a team of people that work with you? Yeah, it's five of us at the moment. So what kind of people do you have on your team? Like what, what roles do they play? Uh, I have my co-founder that I started with. Mm-hmm. Does um, I can't even tell you. I mean, everything is so meshed up together. But she's one of, of like admin and finance side. Uh, I'm definitely fundraising, um, customer acquisition, everything that's kind of like bringing the money mm. is kind of me. And she's like HR and everything that's like money going out. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she does. Gotcha. Um, we have Zaina, who's the one that's in Senegal right now. And she started out as a, inf- like doing a lot of communication um, because at the time we were receiving like hundreds and hundreds of messages a day. Um, also, she did influencer management. She did like distribution. Um, she did a lot of things. And then we have, have Yannick, who is our tech guy because in Africa we had to integrate a lot of back payment systems on the website which wasn't something that you could do yourself like if you don't do tech um and then we have Irene who's our intern nice nice that's so cool because I'm always I always know when you're we have a brand and everything you always have to have people on your team that's one thing I'm working on I'm like a one-man show right now so (laughs) I'm working on like getting some people that I can trust on my team to, you know, do certain things and run it and everything like that. So what kind of workforce would you need? Like, like, how do you say, like, I don't want to say technical, the like logistical, but like, um, everybody, I don't, I don't know the word in English. What kind of profiles are you looking for? I want people to do my social media, my marketing, uh, admin stuff, all types. I need help. If y'all listening and y'all can help me. Send, send help I'm like rave, waving a flag <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so like for our friends in beauty who are interested in starting to like sell like physical beauty products are there some things that they should look out for some steps that they should take before you know launching definitely first of all you have to know beauty has that comes with MOQs. So you can't just go and like say, oh, I'm going to buy like a hundred lip glosses and I'm going to sell them. No, you buy a product, you have to buy like a thousand minimum, you know? Yeah, minimum um, order quantity. Yeah. yeah, that's something that people usually don't know. Uh, also, you have to be very careful. Like everything is so much more complicated than you think. So maybe if you find like a packaging that you like that has to come from China um, and then your product, that's that was okay so our product is made in france but we found this packaging we liked in china and then you have to go through like a whole other four to six weeks in production because you need to now test if the product can exist in that kind of packaging without breaking the you know the regulations for europe like it's it's so many little things like that to think about it's actually not really fun yeah um if you want to work in beauty you know you you just have to like it's like the dream because beauty is so dreamy and now you like stepping behind the dream and behind the dream is not a dream it's it's a lot of work <laughs> so <laughs> just know that um but if you really want to do it just do it mm-hmm. definitely so how how many years in total would you say you've been in the beauty industry like from the time that you started at l'oreal up to now i mean i'm 31 so i've worked since i was 21 maybe Mm-hmm. So it's been 10 years already. You look super young. I know that's right. Thank you. 
You look like you're still 21. <laughs> you know, you know, we don't crack. <laughs> I know, girl, for real. So I know that Anju is gearing up for a new launch soon. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Definitely. Uh, so we decided we really, really wanted to go into lips because we love it. It's a, lot, it's a lot of fun. Also, um, foundation is a great product, but it's also something that you really have to try and that you kind of like have to marry. Like once you find your foundation, this is your foundation, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's also a little, little bit of a challenge to be able to convert people. Um, the lip gloss is like, you can have 10, you can have 15, you want to try whatever you want to try. Yeah. So we have a lip gloss that we're just launching now uh, that comes in six shades that also took us a lot of time. But this one, uh, I don't regret because we spent a lot of time on the formula and it's amazing. It's so good. It smells amazing. Uh, it doesn't stick. It's like, it's a little bit like when you wear Vaseline, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like super shiny and with different colors. <laughs> so that's um that's our launch and that, for that launch we decided to go international with it so we don't longer do just africa we do europe we do the united states um everywhere that you are you can just order yeah so what was that decision like with deciding to branch outside of africa uh, it was honest with you it was a decision that we took because of uh last year with the whole movement the black lives matter movement because mm -hmm. we decided that we spend so much time, the time that, you know, that all this time that we spend in like making products that we think are great. Um, we were a little bit shook with what happened. And I know it's not the first time that somebody gets killed by the police and it's not going to be the last time, but the whole movement really forced us to sit down and have a conversation with the team because we're an all black team. The yeah. only person on the team that's not black is Yannick. And I kind of even want to say he's kind of black on the inside, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. really a question that we all had to think about that what do we want to do? What kind of company do you want do we want to be? And do we really see um do we do we not see ourselves be who we want to the company that we want to be? Because we all live in Europe. And we felt like we it is time that we become what we want to see where we are, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so we decided to expand with the, the, um, the new lounge and just go, whatever, if you're, you know, if you're black and uh, you're in Atlanta or if you're, you know, in London or if you're in Brussels, it doesn't matter. You can definitely access us. Love that. So this is like totally random. Like, so growing up in Europe as like a black woman, do you all like experience like similar things that we experience like in America with like racism and stuff? Oh my God, what a great question. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I know like some of like the, the black people that I've talked to, they don't have like the same stories of like segregation and like slavery and all of that. So I'm just always curious to know, like, what are some of the things that you all go through or not? I don't know. You know what? I think it's pretty similar when you're growing up, but like you have the same experiences, definitely like at school, like people touching your hair, people making comments, maybe feeling like a little bit rejected or, you know, all of this everyday things that I want to say. But I, I've lived in America for a while and it's not the same. It's not the same. It is not the same. And I'm like, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry to say that, but I, I really... I think in America, it's so ingrained, like the whole country was built, the whole systems, all of the systems were built with excluding and discriminating against black people in the first place, which is not the case here. You know what I mean? Like I would bump into a police officer here and I would definitely keep my cool. I'd be like, you know what? It's only if that person is bad that something, you know, could happen. Also, we don't have that whole culture of like guns and whatever. So it doesn't really matter what happens. I know my life isn't endangered or anything, but the United States, it's a whole other level. It's, um, it's, it's a whole other level and I, I can't take it. I yes. seriously, it, it's bugging me like under my skin. You know what I mean? I'm like, why this is so, and I'm, you know what I'm waiting for? I'm waiting for African-Americans to start, you know, leveling up a little bit and leave and just leave and be able to just go. And I know leaving your home because of that isn't fair and it and isn't, you know, 
people can't just tell you, well, if you don't like it, get up and leave. That's not the goal. But if you don't feel like you're being respected as a human being where you are, I want you to have the possibility to go cross the border, come over. We'll we'll party. We'll do everything. Just come, just come over. Yeah. I can't. I can't. What do you think about it? I totally get it. And I always feel the same way. I always like with me just getting back from like even Senegal, I'm like, these are the things that we don't have to worry about. When I was there, I did like an Instagram story and I was like, literally like it's all black people walking down the street. I'm like, if they discriminate against me, it won't be because of I'm black. It will be because maybe I'm American or I don't speak the same language or something like that, but it won't, I won't, I never felt unsafe there because of the color of my skin. Like when you see a police officer here, if a police officer is behind you or something like that, when you're driving, it's automatically like a tense thing because like, you don't know what could happen. Like you could just have your tail light be out and the next, next thing you know, you're a hashtag or something like that. So I'll always joke and say, my goal is to kind of like be able to build a business where I can be online and collect like American dollars and live overseas because I just love just the feeling that I have when I'm in Africa in particular. I haven't been to Europe yet, but when I'm in Africa in particular, it just feels so comfortable and you feel at peace. So I'm really working on like building a business where I can, even if I don't live there forever, maybe I can spend a few months just to have that peace of mind where you don't have to worry about certain things like your livelihood or your life being taken because of the color of your skin. It's so crazy. It's so crazy to me. I really, really hope that you reach your goals. (laughs) Yes, it's, it's going to happen. I can do it now, but yeah. So do you have any other, thank you so much for sharing that too, because I'm always curious about, you know, the other perspective and everything. Um, Random too, do you have any other um, business ventures that you're involved in right now? Or is this like your full time, like your baby that you're working Um, on? It's definitely my full time baby. (laughs) Um, But we do have this fund, investment fund that we are, uh, we were launching with a few what about, like, other people like other people of color in the entrepreneurial community in Belgium and France uh, six of us I kind of step away from the product a little bit because I just didn't have time but I'm still on board for certain things and that's an investment fund that is uh, going to be directed only at people of color in Belgium and France people that want to raise funds for the project nice so, nice so what are you working on your legacy to be when this is all said and done for you? I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you cut off. <laughs> what are you working on your legacy to be when this is all said and done? What do you mean when like onto cosmetics is, is done? So when you're all done here, <laughs> what do you want your legacy to be when you know, people look back 30 years from now and like, what kind of impact would you have wanted to make on like the world? Um, Definitely, I'm not gonna lie. The impact that I wanna have is to create and, and the fact that it's in beauty, I love beauty, but it doesn't really matter if it's beauty or something else, but the brand that I wanna create is something that I really want for, you know, dark skin girls to feel like this is theirs. You know what I mean? Like somewhere like that feels uh, safe, that feels like it's on trend at some point, it resonates with uh, who I am, wherever I am, and that like reunites us and gathers us all under one umbrella is kind of what I want to do. Yeah. Where do you see your brand in like the next five years? I really hope to keep it D2C. Um, so I don't really want to, I don't really see like stores or anything or, you know, distribution. I really want to keep it like in-house. Um, and I, uh, I hope that we're, you know, completely expanded the, the, um, the product line. I hope that the brand has become like really I, I, iconic. I hope that the community is very much alive and very active. Um, basically what we're doing now, but like bigger. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for this. Like, this is such, so great to chat with you and everything and meet you finally. But before you go, I want to ask you the friends and beauty rapid fire questions. So I'm gonna ask you a question and whatever comes to your mind first, I just 
spit it out. Sir, can I just say something before we start? Yeah. Is that we are offering fifteen uh, percent off of the perfect glass to all of your listeners Ooh. with code Friends in Beauty fifteen. So, just wanted to say that. <laughs> that's so exciting friends in beauty 15 i will leave that down in the show notes so definitely grab you some anju cosmetics lip gloss i can't wait to try it yay i can't wait i'm gonna add it to my kit so let's go ahead and jump into it the first question is what are the top three keys to your success so far resiliency network and I guess just work (laughs) I love it how do you measure your success am am I who I want to be yet Mm -hmm. yep I got it what's the best advice that you've ever received um listen to yourself like listen to your gut it's really telling you something nice What advice would you give to someone who's just ready to give up on their dreams of being a cosmetic brand owner? It's so hard. I get you. It's so hard, but keep going. Keep going, I swear. It's going to get better. (laughs) Keep going. Absolutely. And what's a resource that has helped you in your business that you can share with the Friends and Beauty community? Oh my God. I really want to find the name of that thing again, you know, that helped me raise funds um if you think of it just let me know just send me a message if you think i I, I just got it it's called all rays so you know all rays and it's like the orange thing so if you type in and you see some orange website that is it and like random so when they when you raise these funds you don't have to pay them back right no what no (laughs) (laughs) it's just making sure that's a good question though. That's okay. a, no, it's um, risk capital. So, you know, the keyword is risk. If the money is lost, then the money is lost. It's not your fault. Just go back to your activities. And then like when they invest in the company, do they get like a percentage, like a share in the company or something? Yeah, that depends. So the, the, um, if it's uh, shares, then definitely it's money against shares. Um, but then a lot of investors will talk about convertible notes. Which is, which is like, um, it's you borrowing money per se, but there's conditions under which that money is going to tra- um, translate into shares in the future. Okay. However, even though it's debt, you don't have to pay it back. I love that. So the last one, I want you to fill in the blank and say, my name is blank and the key to longevity and success is whatever you think it is. My name is Kinja, and the key to longevity and success is, again, resiliency. I agree. Thank you so much. Before you go, drop your, you know, social media and, you know, your website where people can go to use this 15% off and everything. Sure. So you can get like the lip gloss at our website, which is www.anjou.com and that's A-N for Nicole. D for Didi, G for Jolie, OU.com. And then Andrew Cosmetics is our Instagram favorite you can check out. Yay. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. It was so much fun and you're so organized. It's such a pleasure for real. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Friends in Beauty podcast. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this episode with at least one friend in beauty. And subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts so that other friends and beauties can find this show. Plus, we'd love to hear your feedback. Connect with us on all social media platforms at Friends and Beauty, hashtag Friends and Beauty to join the conversation, and join our Friends and Beauty Facebook community to stay connected. Talk to you soon.